All right, good afternoon, everybody. All right, so welcome to the second day of work camp. This is room maybe. And traditionally, standing in this corner, weighing a salt 150 pounds, soaking wet. Geraldine from Raleigh? Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina. Representing Give WP. Mm -hmm. Give it up for the senior support technician, Ben Meredith. Nice. It's always been a dream of mine to be 150 pounds again, so <laughs> maybe someday. Thank you uh, for that. So this is Walter. Walter graduated from local uh, college with a degree in finance and uh, after interning for two summers with the local financial planning group, uh, got a job with him straight out of college. Loves his job and when he's not working, he loves to uh, volunteer at the local animal shelter. Um, one day they're sitting around, there's like you know, five people that volunteer and then the one person that's getting paid to be in the meeting uh, sitting there and, and looks around the room and says, Walter. You're the techiest person we've got here. Can you make us a website? For a little bit of background, as techy as Walter gets is he has successfully installed the email uh, on his phone, and he has an Amazon Prime membership. <laughs> this, is, this is the extent to which he is techy, but he's the one in the room who works all day on computers in his job as a financial planner, and so therefore, by default, he is the webmaster now for the animal shelter. So, he looks around the room and he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. I, I, sure, I'll give it a shot. I'll make a website. And so the, the current website exists on WordPress. It's really old, hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, whoever designed it has since moved on from volunteering with the animal shelter. And so he Googles around, finds a theme that markets itself to animal shelters. And he says, ah, yeah, that looks pretty good, it looks nice. So he buys this premium theme and sets about the process of setting up his website. You guys might have been here before, so he, he sets it up and uh, eventually runs into a problem making it look exactly like it's supposed to look, right? Looking at the demo, looking at his site, looking at them, it's not exactly right. And so he's, he's like, okay, I can, I can do this. And uh, immediately a thought crosses his mind, I will do anything to not contact support. Why? Because support techs, uniquely, I think, in, in the world, have the ability to take otherwise completely competent humans like Walter and make them feel stupid. <laughs> right? And he doesn't want to play the game. He doesn't want to be that, because you know, what's, what is the sole purpose of the first person you talk to in support? It's to talk to the second person, right? Like, I need to be escalated to your manager because you're not going to be able to solve my problem. And so you play the game. You're like, okay. I did this, yes, I turned it off and back on. Yes, I did this, yes, I did that. Can I please talk to somebody who can fix my problem? Right? Nobody wants to play the game, and Walter didn't want to play the game, so he's like, I'm not going to play the game. I'm going to figure it out. And so five hours later, Walter is still trying to figure out how to move the pic you know, the header like two pixels to the right to look just like the demo, and he is losing his ability to form complete sentences. Right? And so he finally submits the support ticket, and it's like a cave person has submitted a support ticket. <laughs> Me, website, bro, bad, fixed, slider. Like, at some point, we've all been there, right? And so today, my goal with this talk is to teach you how to short circuit the game. I'm going to give you the cheat codes for the support game. Uh, and it's, by the way, not going to be get escalated to a manager, because in WordPress it doesn't work exactly like that. There's generally only like three people on the whole team in the support world in WordPress. So the frontline person's really good um, in most cases. And so, but before um, we talk about the solution to uh, caveman syndrome, uh, time for a much less fictional story. I graduated from the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill with a degree in religious studies. I lovingly called it pre-unemployment. Uh, before I recognized that, that was like prophetic and you shouldn't say things because later they come true. Um, but anyway, so that gave me, and my focus was in early American religious history, so I could fairly confidently hold a conversation about the Amish or Mormons or Shakers or Quakers or itinerant snake handling preachers. Like these are things that I could have 
a fairly reasonably intelligent conversation about. Completely absent from my formal schooling was uh, anything to do with the web. No, no code, no, no anything. Um, and so, fast forward a few years, um, I, like Walter in my fictional story, was working for, uh, well, I was working for a nonprofit, um, and my boss looked at me and said, you just got a new computer, can you make us a website? <laughs> Which is fun, now we've come like full circle, now it's like, I'm a web developer. Oh, you're a web developer, and you fix my printer. <laughs> These two things are not related. <laughs> um, so yes, I owned a, oh, what's up? I owned a new computer, but in his defense, I had also told him that I wanted to get into web development, so, I said, sure, uh, I'll create a website. And like Walter, I got a premium theme, which gave me access to a premium support channel. Um, and I started asking dumb questions. And I'm, I don't mean that to sound like self-deprecating or like, no, they were really dumb questions. And in retrospect, looking back, I see how poorly um, I went about the process, excuse me, I went about the process of getting good support. And so there I was sitting, um, trying to figure out how uh, to make websites, and I, I really had no no clue what I was doing. I knew some basic HTML. Um, so fast forward again to 2013, I began using my degree in pre-unemployment. I became unemployed, and I decided that I was going to um, learn web stuff. You know, I've been kind of dabbling in it since uh, 2009 or so, and I was like, I'm going I'm to learn everything there is from the server to the browser, like what all these technologies are. So. Linux and Apache and Nginx and MySQL and all this stuff. I'm just kind of learning it um, on the fly. And I was also doing some freelance work because my children have this nasty habit of eating. Like they just, they keep wanting to eat and I keep having to buy food and give it to them. So I was just kind of taking any work I could get uh, in, that was even just tangentially related to the web and to WordPress because I kind of started to, you know, that's where I started with web stuff. So that's where I ended up. And um, a client that I was working for was asked, asked me, I was just kind of doing project management, she was an entrepreneur and had her own content marketing business and wanted me to add one of those click to tweet boxes to her posts and pages. And so, you know, it's like it pre-fills the tweet text for you to send away. And she said, can you find me a good plugin to do that? And so I said to her, so I went and looked at the uh, various options at that time uh, in 2013, late 2013, um, that were available in the WordPress repository. And I found a couple that were doing some cool stuff. And I had just learned enough about WordPress to learn about the shortcode API, which none of the existing options for click to tweet plugins were using. And so I found the one that I liked the most, and it was called click to tweet. And because I'm great at naming things, I, I forked it and created better click to tweet. Um, <laughs> which is, again, I'm, I'm wonderful at the naming process, but that plugin quickly became the most popular um, click suite plugin in the repository. And I don't say that because I think it's the best coded or I'm the best developer or any of that, but I made a decision very early on that uh, Better Click Suite was going to be the, the best supported plugin in the repo. I kind of viewed it as a resume. Like, either I'm gonna get a job, spoiler alert, um, that's the next slide, um, but, Either I'm going to get a job or I'm going to grow my freelance business with this plugin, and so I'm going to prove that I can support a product, and, and just was maniacal about it. My wife knew that if uh, my phone dinged while we were at dinner, um, and it was a support te support ticket for better click to tweet, that I was going to get up and answer it, because I wanted people to get answers when, in minutes, not even hours, uh, to support tickets. And so it really was a, a proving ground. Well, in 2016, I got a job with Give. Um, largely in part to better click to tweet, I think, um, and some friends of mine that uh, told me I should apply. Um, Give is the donation platform for WordPress. Uh, the headquarters is here in San Diego, and so um, my job with Give is senior support technician, so another full circle. I've gone from being the one who asks the, whether or not they're good, is debatable questions to support technicians, to now being the one who answers uh, support questions. Um, before I get into the solution to the support game, here's a little bit more about me. That's my wife and two of my children. Uh, my wife Jacqueline Benjamin's wearing the UNC National Champions uh, shirt over here. 
uh, and Theo is the shorter one there. I also have a foster baby, which for obvious reasons I can't put into slideshows, but if you find me after the talk, I will inundate you with photos of my foster child. Um, he's one. He just turned one this week. So where we're going today, oh, and I live in Cary, North Carolina, so I'm 100% remote uh, for GIF. Where we're going today, the WordPress way and why it matters, how not to do what I did, and then we'll end with the perfect support ticket. So, the WordPress way, this might feel like I'm taking a little bit of a, a detour, but I promise it matters. Um, because in the WordPress world, support works differently than in some other tech industries, and that's because WordPress is different in certain ways. And so WordPress, since the beginning, you might see the tagline in certain places, democratizing publishing. The goal of WordPress is to give a voice to people who otherwise would not have a voice, um, and to give them the ability to be their own gatekeeper, right? No longer do you have to be the editor of the New York Times to decide who gets to say things into the world. No longer do you have to be the editor of Penguin Books to say into the world, this is a fault that matters. So WordPress, the goal is to democratize publishing, which again is decentralizing, taking the gatekeepers away and making each one of us as website owners our own gatekeeper. And that's awesome for democratizing, but it's really difficult for support. <laughs> because now no longer is there one person that you can send a support ticket to, like you can with some other tech industries, who has full control over all of the elements going on, the plugins, the themes, the hosting environment. There's no one person other than you who has control over all that. And so that dramatically affects how you have to approach support. If you think of WordPress like an airplane, your WordPress website like an airplane, you are both the pilot and the owner. You, you're the one who's flying the plane. At best, the support technician can come alongside as like a flight attendant or an air marshal or maybe an airline mechanic. But at the end of the day, even if I fly the plane for you for a few minutes while we fix a problem, you have to go back to being the one flying the plane. As a support technician, I, I'm, I'm just here to help. You'll, you'll often see, and I think I even did on uh, that first theme that I bought uh, back in 2009, you'll see the words easy in WordPress marketing materials. It's, it's easy, it makes making a website easy or simple. And so WordPress is easy, like, Flying a plane is easier than building a plane. <laughs> WordPress is easy, I'll say it again, like flying a plane is easier than building a plane. And there's still a learning curve, right? You cut yourself some slack. <laughs> or maybe if you like music and you're into musical metaphor, WordPress is easy like playing piano is easier than building a piano. Nobody's ever sidled up to a piano and accidentally played Beethoven's, uh, I have to look it up here. Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 2 in B-flat major, which I had to Google to figure out a tough piano concerto. Um, nobody's ever accidentally played that, or played it right on the first try, right? And so there's still a learning curve with WordPress. And so it is much easier than starting from scratch and building your own content management system, but it's still going to take, uh, take some time. So that's the first point there. Cut yourself some slack. Imagine a young couple. They recently got married, they went on their honeymoon, they came home from the honeymoon, and uh, the husband starts working out, um, and in the mornings he'll go and work out super early, and he comes back and takes a shower and goes to work. And he starts a, a terrible habit of throwing his dirty gym socks, sweaty gym socks, and he's aiming for the hamper that's beside the, the bed for the dirty clothes, and he keeps missing. He keeps landing the, the sock on her side of the bed, right up there near the pillow. It's a sweaty, nasty gym sock. And so the first time it happens, she's like, you know, it's not, whatever, she just moves it. And the next time it happens, they have one of those cute newlywed fights where it's like, you to be, I'm so sorry to be, <laughs> And it's sort of like a halfway fight. It's like passive aggressive fighting. Um, and then eventually though, as these things tend to do, he keeps making a mistake. And so it becomes a fight, right? It's like a big deal. And he's like, okay, I'll do better. I'm sorry, and he does, for a little while he does better. Um, but he falls back into bad habits. So fast forward like six months, a year later, this is still happening, it's kind of a recurring pattern. And she just loses it one day. She's like, that's it, you need to clean it up. And he's like, whoa, 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 we need to go to counseling. 
And she just laughed. She was like, we don't need to go to counseling. We need you. This is not putting your son. You can go to counseling if you want to, but I'm not going. And he's like, okay. So he books an appointment with this $500 an hour marriage counselor, right? Like the top cream of the crop. Best marriage counselor uh, there is. And he gets there, uh, and he sits down, and as counselors do, they say, so what brings you here today? And he crosses his arms. My wife blew up at me for no reason. Now, I don't care if this guy's the Michael Jordan of marriage counseling. Like, he's, he's not going to be able to get to the problem immediately, right? I want you to view you going to support text for your WordPress website like taking a relationship with your website to counseling. Support for WordPress is like finally taking your relationship to your website to counseling, and unlike where the metaphor falls completely apart, unlike counseling where it's kind of expected that there's going to be some back and forth, like there's going to be like, he's paid for an hour, he's, he's going to sit there and answer a lot more questions with support. That folded arms, my wife blew up at me for no reason, is not as helpful, because now he's got to figure out without it taking 15 times back and forth. Um, what was wrong? Here's what that, uh, you know, arms folded, um, my wife blew up at me for no reason, looks like in the WordPress world. We referenced it in Walter's case, um, but here's what the actual ticket looks like, and I've su both submitted this ticket and gotten this ticket as a support technician countless times. <laughs> it's broken, please fix, right? I love that picture. Um, it's bro <laughs> broken, please fix. And I've been there. I've been the guy that spent five hours trying to avoid, at all costs, having to send in a support ticket, and then eventually, by the time I give up, I'm like, I don't, the last thing I want to do is explain to you what's actually broken. Like, your website, or your theme is terrible, and it's the worst thing ever, and it's broken, fix it. Or your plugin is terrible, and it's the worst thing ever, you fix it. There's, there's one thing, that, there's one ticket that might be even more frustrating, and it's subtle, and it's this. I read all the docs, and it's still broken. Please fix. That feels better as the person submitting the ticket, right? Because you're, you're like, you're, you're trying to play the game, right? Because the game is, the next thing they're going to say is, have you read the instructions? And so you're able to, to kind of preempt that. Like, you know, so I've already read the docs. But now what this ticket does to me as a support technician, and it's almost never intentional, you were trying to be helpful. You were trying to, to clue me in that, you know, I've played this game before. I've read the docs. Um, now I have to be like a, I have to be a detective as I'm figuring out where either the docs are wrong or incomplete or which step you skipped or whatever. So this is really close to a great ticket. And for the rest of the talk today, we're going to take the space after that first comma, and we're going to add four paragraphs, and we're going to make it into an excellent ticket. And so here's the four things that you need to do in between, I read all the docs, and it's still broken, please fix. You need to tell me four things. What you're trying to do, what specific steps you took, what you expected to happen, and what happened instead. Those are the four things that you got to put into the ticket. And the reason why it's so helpful is not just because it helps the support technician, but as I'll show you, this can help you solve the ticket yourself. It's a process called, um, did everybody get those? I'm going to switch to the next slide. It's a process called rubber ducking. And this is a real thing that developers do, and they take a rubber duck, a physical rubber duck, and they put it on their desk. I used the Wapu from WordCamp US a couple of years ago, and he sits on my desk, it's a little plush toy that sits on my desk. And when I'm coding something, either for better click suite or trying to debug a problem with Git, I will read through the code out loud, and I'll say, well, on line one, it's supposed to do this, and on line two, it's supposed to do this, and there's an if statement on line three that if that's true, then this will happen, and I with my words, I'm a dad, so I, I can say things like, use your words. I use my words, and I, I say out loud to the Wapu toy, or the rubber duck, as the case may be, what was supposed to happen. And what happens, like, I'd say 50% of the time is, the duck solves the problem. <laughs> right? And what's going on here is, you're using a totally different part of your brain, I don't know which part, but it's a part of the brain. Um, 
You're using a totally different part of your brain than you do when you did these steps, when you explain the steps. And so you're, you're, it's like giving yourself a different perspective on the situation to talk about what you did. And what will happen is you'll say, and, and again, the specific steps, the number two here is crucially important. I don't mean I read the docs. I mean I read the docs at this URL, and in point two, you say to do this, here's what I did. And in point three, you say to do this, and here's what I did. And as you're explaining it again, out loud, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to point four and been like, oh, I didn't do that. And so then you go back and do it, and so it creates this loop. Um, two, three, and four, you just kind of keep doing two, three, and four over and over again, where you eventually get to the point where the rubber duck solves the problem because you realize that, that you weren't doing things exactly right. So that's, that's the first thing that can happen as a result of those four steps. The second thing is you could show me your golf swing. If I went to a ball golf professional, I prefer disc golf, so if I went to a ball golf professional and showed him or her my swing, you know, they would probably immediately be able to tell me like 10 things I'm doing wrong. They'd be like, well, you're lifting your head, and this arm's breaking, and your wrists are all over the place. And like, there's, they, they'd be able to tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong. Why? Because they've seen a lot of people hit a lot of golf balls a lot of times. In fact, they themselves, the way you become a professional golfer is to hit it into the lake way more times than the average human. Like, they've, they've done this a lot. And so, the way you become a professional support technician for WordPress is you break websites in spectacular ways. I've, I've broken a website in way more spectacular ways than you. I've taken down production websites totally by accident with a semicolon. Like, I've, we've, I've done it. And, and I've got lots of support tickets. And so when I get that ticket that says, I took this PHP snippet from your documentation, and I put it into the post editor, and I clicked update, and nothing happened. Some of you heard it. Post editor is not where PHP snippets go. So if you tell me that level of detail, that this is what you did, I'm immediately going to go, ah, here's your problem. And we've actually got a documentation article for that. And here's what you do with PHP snippets. And bang, it's like a four character keyboard text snippet. And I can answer that question in literally 30 seconds in a very comprehensive way. Because I've seen lots and lots of people make that mistake. I made that mistake. I, I remember when I made it. Um, and so that's the second thing that can happen. You could either rubber duck it and figure out the problem yourself, which happens a lot, or you could show me your golf swing and I can immediately be able to spot what you are doing wrong. The third thing is, I think, far more interesting. In 1990, well, the book is made to stick by Chip and Dan Heath, and they tell the story of Elizabeth Newton, who was a PhD student at Stanford, uh, in 1990 when she made a groundbreaking discovery um, uh, so her research uh, that year. What she did was she took two groups of people, tappers and listeners. The tappers, she gave, gave them a slip of paper with a common song title on it, something that everyone in the, the listener group would know. So, happy birthday to you, Jingle Bells, something like that. And before, and, and they were told to tap out the melody on a table. So instead of singing or humming or whistling the tune, for jingle bells it would be right? That's jingle bells. You all heard it. Um, and so she, but before they tapped out the melody, they were asked to guess what percentage of the listeners would get it right. Estimate what percentage. And so they already knew the title. They're looking at jingle bells and they're looking at the people across the room. They're like, these people will get it right. They estimated 50% of the time. They said 50% of the time they'll get it right. That seems fair, right? 50% is Jingle Bells. Everybody knows Jingle Bells. And so what actually happened was they got it right 2% of the time. <laughs> Two. So tappers overestimated their own ability to communicate a message by 48%. Like, they were way off in their, their estimation. What's going on there is once you know the melody, it is impossible for you to remember what it was like to not know the melody. When I tap, there's none of you in the room that didn't hear jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All of you heard it because you can't pull yourself out of that knowledge. Here's what documentation is. 
on our website on GiveWP, on BetterClickToTweet.com. My documentation is me tapping on the table. And I, there's, I know by virtue of the fact that I can't remember what it was like to not know how to install a plugin. I can't remember what it was like to not know how to activate caching or to not know how to migrate servers. I, I, I've learned lots of stuff. I've got lots of different melodies in my head. And so when I write that documentation, what I'm doing is tapping on the table. And so I need listeners in my life to show me where my documentation has holes. And as you walk through those four steps of, here's what I'm trying to do. Here's the steps, I took specific steps, using your documentation. Here's what happened. I can immediately go, oh, oh, the documentation is not clear on this point. I didn't think about that. And so I'm able to go and fix the documentation. And so those are, those are the, the three things that can happen and do happen on a daily basis. Uh, that actually the, the process of writing the support ticket is in and, in and of itself makes the whole of the product better. So a customer can write a support ticket that results in the documentation getting better or more complete or the screenshot being exactly accurate, which then more people like the product. Which, and so it, it starts with a great support ticket. And so submitting those good support tickets matters. Before we close, I couldn't figure out another place to put this in the talk, so I just stuck it right in, right here in the middle. Here's some tips. Um, first of all, all caps is yelling. <laughs> don't, don't yell. It's, it's not nice. Tangentially related to that, profanity does not get you moved forward in the line. I translate WTF to why this first, and I just move it back. I will answer you, and you will get great support later. You're in timeout. I'm a father. We don't talk like that around you. Um, so that's number point, tip number one. Tip number two, never send your credentials, your login, email, password, your credentials in an email. Don't ever do that. Instead, if you need to send credentials, if the support tech needs access to your site, what you do is you make them a new user with their email and send them those credentials. Now, we use onetimesecret.com so that people can paste in their um, username and password that they just created for us into onetimesecret.com and then we can click on it one time and the, the server deletes it after that. Or you can just send those in the email itself as long as you're religious to delete that user after the, the support ticket is over. Um, so that's two tips there. And uh, finally, uh, my, my final tip, rather, is if you pay less than $1,000 for the solution that you are seeking support for, it's pretty business standard to expect about a one business day turnaround on a ticket. Now, full disclosure, give, we try really hard to do way better than that. And we advertise two to four business hours. I think that's weird. Um, it's abnormal. It's good, but it's abnormal. And so I would expect if you pay less than $1,000, a, a one business day turnaround. If you pay more than that, they'll probably get back to you faster than that. So that's my three tips that I can stick anywhere else. Um, so we'll close with this. I told you earlier we were going to talk about the perfect support ticket, and then I like spoiled my own punchline because there is no perfect support ticket, right? If there's no audience, who could receive the perfect support ticket. No one person has control over your theme, your plugins, your hosting environment, all of the different, you know, your content writers, all of the people that are in your organization, then there can't be a perfect support ticket. And so as we, we recognize that, it'll, it'll go a long way. I had no idea in uh, 2008, 2009, whatever that was, as a religion major working for a nonprofit uh, organization, I had no idea I was making a career transition. Um, but in retrospect, what happened was pretty obvious. Um, I got roped in by WordPress. See, WordPress is not just the software that powers 30% of the internet or whatever the, the number is these days. Um, WordPress is a community. And especially starting in about 2014, when I started going to WordCamps and I started seeing the community around WordPress, I got roped in. Um, and so I could have 
made this talk much, much shorter, like two minutes. And I'm going to end with those two minutes. Um, see, because WordPress, how to get better support in WordPress is simple. You get better support in WordPress by keeping in mind that you are WordPress. The people in this room, the people uh, here in the other rooms, the other tracks, the people at WordCamp London, across the pond, the people all around the world that are a part of this WordPress community are WordPress. And so as you submit a support ticket to a theme shop or to uh, a software as a service company in the WordPress space or to a plugin shop, keeping in mind that you are WordPress totally changes the conversation. Because you're not sending a support ticket to some nameless, faceless other. You're sending a support ticket to one of your people. And, and I think if we can keep that in mind, uh, we'll make not only uh, WordPress better, as I've mentioned, uh, great support makes the whole ecosystem better. Uh, great support from the ticket side and great support from the support side. Um, you'll not only make WordPress better, you'll make uh, the world uh, a better place. So thank you so much. And I have time for questions if anyone has any. I will also accept comments and snag remarks. <laughs> Remained on the religion track. I think there's a lot of similarities. I think I, my hypothesis is the question for anybody who didn't hear it, and for the camera if it's still on, um, is do do I think that my in, had I not been introduced to WordPress, I would have continued on the, the religion track. And I think in in many ways, sure. I think without WordPress as a way to give outlet to some of these uh, creative tendencies and creative um, technical desires and things like that. I probably would have stayed in full-time ministry or stayed somewhere uh, on what would be considered more of a traditional religious path. But honestly, I feel like my job and support right now is equally sociological, equally philosophical, equally um, spiritual in a certain sense. Now, obviously, I'm not doing any, we don't talk about spiritual things on support tickets. But my understanding of how people work that I gained in nonprofit work and in religious studies, um, I think really helps uh, in the human side of support. Because I'm not dealing, I have to remind myself, and if this talk had been to support technicians, I would have said, you have to remind yourself that the people on the other end of the support ticket, even though they sound like cave people and they're angry because they you know, can't get this stuff to work, they're people. And they're, they're sitting there with a the boss breathing down their neck or you know, something like that. And so I think having that level of insight, not that I excelled in it or anything, but coming from that side, not being trained technically, officially, but being trained, you know, interpersonally in my previous jobs, I think really helps in support. And so when I look for people to, to work with me in the support capacity, that's what I'm going to look for is people who understand people. Um, understanding the tech stuff can be taught. Understanding people and basic human decency can't really be taught. Well, it can, but it's, it's hard. That's a great question. Thanks. Anything else? Have you gotten support tickets that where they try to get very detailed and they clearly get lost in the weeds? And if so, how do you diagnose that from there? Yes, I've gotten all sorts of tickets. Um, um, a lot of times it really helps. Uh, the, there's almost no point at which more detail is bad. Like, um, a lot of times if they give me a ton of detail and they get sidetracked into something, like for example, if I know that their, their root problem is they're getting this error from the payment gateway for, for give or something, and it's an explicit payment gateway error, and I, I know that, and they get sidetracked into, and I'm in test mode, and this is this and this, and they're telling me all this stuff that doesn't really relate back to their main issue, it never hurts. It's not, you know, um, I'm still going to do the same um, stuff because I, I probably see what the problem is based on the, the error. But yeah, I, I mean, I think 
we try really hard to do less than three responses to a resolution of people's issues. And so that first response, um, our philosophy is to, to give, we, my wife calls me an over-explainer, and I'm very well suited for my first response because I, I over-explain everything. I'm like, well, here's the 19 things it could be. <laughs> Buckle up, get some coffee. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'll give them all, everything I can because my goal is for them uh, we say this all the time in our support meetings. My goal is for them to never be able to say, okay, I did that, what next? Like, well, here's the 19 next things. And if you get all the way to the end of it, it's probably, and, and it's a complicated issue, I probably have already asked you for staging site access or for uh, credentials to create a staging site for you or, you know, to pull clone your site from my development environment. And so that, that would be what they respond with. But I, I never want them to say, to be able to say, okay, I've tried all that, that didn't fix it. Because we've all been there. Again, that feels like I'm putting all the work onto the, the user to figure stuff out. And if it's a complicated issue, I want to figure out more. I don't want them to have to figure out. Other questions? Yeah. All right, well, thanks so much. Stick around, I'm going to have beatbox competition with Matt Cromwell, he gets to go first. <laughs>